Welcome my friends, Evan Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode. Today I'm doing mostly just a status update, but also a little bit of troubleshooting with my lithium battery and a few problems I'm having with my power setup. Uh, not really problems, but just annoying things that happen on a daily basis. Let's roll the intro and get into it. So it's been a couple of weeks since my last posting and I figured there's a few small things, well, lots of small things that I've been working on. Nothing really big or major, uh, but I thought I'd just do a short video here with an update on some of the new things that I have in my rig, things that are happening in my life. Uh, currently, I'm parked and camped a bit outside of Flagstaff in National Forest land. It is quite nice here. Fall is... Fall has arrived and I quite enjoy this weather. Uh, it's really great. Everything's performing great with the truck and the trailer with the exception of this little quirky thing with my electric system. One of my most recent additions is a small portable tabletop outdoor grill, which is uh, quite nice. I have a little cover here for it so that I can protect it from the weather, but you can see that it's uh, stainless steel, quite quite nice here it's an Amazon best review top choice thing so I quite like that uh, I've been working on my Starlink system as well and I've added a nice little plug which you can see up here in the side of my rig that allows me just to undo one little clip of a plug and then close the port when I travel and then to plug it back in and I cut the cable in half to do that rewired it with uh, RJ45 Ethernet connectors on each side. I think that's what they're called. One of the other updates that I did was to my diesel heater. I changed the location of the fuel pump and moved it up right next to the fuel tank at the front of my rig. It's about 14 feet overall distance, about 12 foot now after the pump all the way to the heater versus where it was before, which was about a foot and a half distance between the heater and the um, pump. Now those diesel heaters, uh, those of you that are not familiar with them, do better at pumping towards the heater than sucking from the tank. So it's much better to put the pump next to the tank instead of the heater. So I've relocated that and changed out the fuel filter. Uh, both of those were recommendations from Badge and also uh, I was able to find those things online. So now I have my fuel filter right here outside of the box and my tanks inside the box here. And then it goes down into the chassis down there. And then the pump is just right the other side of that metal beam on the undercarriage. And of course the pump is set up at the proper angle so that it uh, works efficiently and it gets the proper amount of lubrication and reducing the debris in the diesel fuel, which is one of the things required by uh, diesel heaters in general. I also added some little levels on the front and the side which makes it easier when I'm parking to get this thing level immediately instead of using a hand level which I've been doing for the last year. As you can see I've been making lots of tiny little changes. And here's another one. I put in a replacement screen door. The other one had a tear in it. I actually tripped and fell and ran my thumb through it and it was also not quite sealing properly so um, i have a replacement door here this is just a typical amazon uh, thing here you can find these it's magnetic so it opens in the middle and then just snaps shut it's pretty nice the last video you saw i was working on my kitchen cabinets i've not really done much since other than purchase some better quality plywood i got some cab i purchased some cabinet grade birch and it's really really nice great finish and I purchased two giant sheets of that and had them pre-cut at the lumber yard to the sizes that I need and so here in the next week or so I'm going to try to make a new cabinet this one will hold a sink oh I forgot to mention I purchased a sink and a faucet uh, I'm not going to show you those today because they're still in the box but in an upcoming video when I'm building that cabinet you'll get to see that. So that is in the works and then I've decided to rebuild my existing cabinet, uh, the lower and upper, uh, just the quality of those and the construction and the quality of plywood is just not what I'm looking for or want in my cabinets. So 
I'm going to salvage a bunch of the wood out of that for the remake. Actually, there's no rush on that. I'll probably just use those as they are for a while um, and then replace them at my convenience. So let me explain what's happening with my electrical system back here. You can see the inverters, everything else. Um, I have a custom lithium battery, which I built with uh, multiple cells, 16 cells to be exact, and then three Renergy uh, charge controllers to run those. And the lithium batteries themselves have a balance system, a BMS, a battery management system. And those are two DALI uh, BMSs. So let me show you those and explain what's going on. Okay, it's about 8.30 in the morning. Uh, this is my battery here. i got 16 cells. These are Fortune 100 lithium battery cells. Then we have two Bally BMSs here. These are battery management systems. And I think that these are what's part of the problem, half of the problem anyway. Um, and I'll explain in a second what's going on there. Up here I have the three Renergy charge controllers which convert the power from the solar panels into the proper voltage for uh, the batteries to be charging below. So right now it's charging at 10 amps at uh, probably oh, 27 volts or something like that. So this is probably about 270 watts times three uh, here. So a little over a thousand watts. Uh, actually it's 757 right now according to my shunt. Okay, so let me explain what's going on with the batteries. The short answer is I don't really know. The long answer is far more complicated as you might guess. Um, I can list the symptoms first and then my guess. The symptoms are once I'm getting to probably about 98%, 97% of my full charge, which is mid-morning sometime between 10 and 11 o'clock depending on the season, the outside weather, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and how much uh, electricity I've used since uh, sundown. But basically once I get to the high 90s on my charge and the voltage on my 24 volt system is pushing over 20, uh, close to 29 volts. When that happens, all of a sudden the power for everything in my system shuts down. All components. It's as though the batteries turn off. Well, there's only two ways for all of the batteries to be turned off. One is a manual switch, which I can turn myself to disconnect them and turn it off for maintenance or other reasons. Uh, that's on, so it's not that. The only other thing that can interrupt the battery power to the entire electrical system here is the BMS, the DALI BMS, those two units that I just showed. Uh, all of the electric goes through that into the rest of the system. And the purpose of the BMS, for those of you not savvy on electrical stuff, is to balance all of those 16 cells so that they're at the same voltage. Because slowly over time, as they charge and discharge, they drift away in voltage naturally. So you have to actively um, go in there and either manually do it every few weeks or something like that to rebalance them or buy a BMS like I have and have it automatically do it on each charge cycle. So I think what's happening and I'm pretty sure the DALI BMS has a overcharge disconnect on it. So when it gets to 29.2 volts on my system those will sense an overcharge and shut down for one second and then wait until the voltage drops before they power back on. So I think that's what's happening every day at about 10.30 or 11 o'clock. So today I am waiting for 10 o'clock, 10.30 for this thing to develop the errors and start shutting down so that I can capture that on video and show you what's going on. Again, that's just my guess that the battery management system is getting an overcharge disconnect here. And there's two ways to solve this. One is to change the settings on the BMS to a higher voltage so that it doesn't shut down. The other solution is to go into my Renergy charge controllers, each of the three of them, and manually change the settings for the top end so that they quit charging like at 28.9 or 29 volts, just a little bit short of what the BMS 
would automatically kick in as an overcharge. So what I'm trying to do is go to the battery manufacturer, the place that I bought these from, and get the proper settings so that I know what the max number is so that I'm able to get the BMS adjusted properly and get the charge controllers adjusted properly so that everything's dialed into the proper numbers and proper settings that the batteries want to see instead of what the defaults are, which is what they're on now. Um, granted, they are working now. They're just not optimal. And then it does cause this really annoying uh, interrupts around 10, 10, 30, along with the screeching bleep noise generated by one of my inverters, which does not like the power going off while it's in use. So I'm going to show you the error that I'm getting here on my system. Oh, on one minute intervals, pretty much on the dot, it makes a screeching bleep noise. And that's actually the inverter giving an H1 error for, I think, there it went, for high voltage. And you also see the Renergies here go to zero. All of them go to zero. It has no power and it's resetting. The Renergies are on about a three or four second cycle before they'll power back up so they like go through a diagnostic and then reboot and then all of a sudden you see power coming back like now so you can see the power is coming back in i'm about 27.7 about 27 volts plus or minus and i verified this with a fluke voltmeter directly on the bus bars so i think what's happening here is it's doing a microsecond disconnect and that's enough to make the inverter bleep give an h1 error turn off all three of the charge controllers but it's not long enough for things like the refrigerator to shut down because the refrigerator compressor is running right now and it runs off of this uh, smaller inverter here which is victron and it may just be that this victron is such high quality that it has larger capacitors in here and it's able to make it through that micro uh, break in the current so it's a very strange and interesting situation that i very much like to solve all right uh, part of what i'm doing today i'm wearing a mask just because i'm a little cautious about that but i have a neighbor friend over here who has his education in electrical work and he's helping me program my charge controllers we're going to try that as step one to solve this We've gone through and programmed these first two charge controllers on the left, and we're doing the last one right now, and you have to do that in a user mode. Uh, what did you find out? What do you think is our problem? What was going on here? I think we had these settings wrong because in the manual it says, in very small print, the parameters are multiplied by 2 for a 24-volt system. Right. And that... we have a 24-volt system, and the settings were we're not they were all like 12 volts they were, right? were like 12 volts so now we're, we had to do the math and double everything or cut it in half we had to so use we, a calculator by the way yeah. to divide stuff in half that how sad is that yeah <laughs> so now we're back to saying it so now we're going to set the equalized voltage okay so what was that again i had called the battery manufacturer to get this equalized voltage uh, according to them 13.6 which is doubled by the way and then boost next. And these are all the same size panels, right? Correct. Okay. They're all identical. Okay. Each charge controller, by the way, controls two panels on the top. So. Okay, so next is boost. Boost is 14.2. Uh, okay. And then we got float. Uh, float is 13.6. Okay. And then we got... Uh, after float is over discharge return voltage. Return voltage is 12.6. Okay. And then we got over discharge voltage. Uh, nine. Okay, so All right. These numbers here that I have on my little notepad came from talking to the Fortune 100 cell people that I bought the lithium cells from. So hopefully these will be dialed in for the correct numbers uh, from Renergy and I'm not going to get the errors today. I'll know within an hour if it starts bleeping like crazy and I get errors. Yep, so I think you're good on those three. So I'm very grateful to Nathan, my neighbor here, for coming over today and helping me with this. He'll be here for a couple more days, so we're going to let this run and see if I get errors today and if everything's performing well. I'm going to do measurements later today with a fluke and 
uh, my little voltage meter and make sure everything still looks good and it's charging properly. But yeah, and uh, let's uh, hope for no no alerts today. Yeah, yeah, no exactly. Alarms. <laughs> okay, thank you <laughs> so much. Fixed. It's a couple days later. I just want to give you a status update on those changes and how that went. Uh, I thought I had everything solved, but it looks like that did not uh, prevent this repeating error happening. Um, so just the next day and the day after that, same exact thing. I still think it's probably related to the BMS and getting some sort of overcurrent. Uh, all indications seem to be leading that direction. I don't know if I need to replace the BMS with a different unit or something else is going on. But anyway, uh, for now, temporary solution is I'll be turning off one or two of my charge controllers to tamper down the amount of power coming into the system and that seems to be a solution for now it may be i just have too many solar panels up on my roof i have six panels 375 watts a piece that's 2.25 uh, kilowatts 2250 i think and that's a lot of power up there i intend eventually to install a split ac and be able to run that which is part of why i wanted that much solar up there during the hot part of the day to be able to power that unit. And um, I'm planning on adding one more bank uh, to my lithium batteries. So that is in the future sometime soon. Um, that's all I have for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment and I'll see you in a future episode. <music>